The NHS Staff Council yesterday voted in favour of the earned increase of 5% from next month for all NHS workers. Well, pretty much all. doesn't include the BMA, the junior doctors. Uh, but um, that also includes uh, one-off uh, lump sums to cover last year of around, well, between 1,600 and 3, 3,800, 13,000, they'd be very happy with that, 3,800 pounds, depending on uh, your pay band. Uh, but not every... Uh, health union voted for this and the Royal College of Nursing is actually going to ballot its members nationwide whether they should continue uh, to strike even though they will receive that 5% pay rise from next month. Well let's talk about this uh, with Dame Anne-Marie Rafferty. She's the Professor of Nursing Policy at King's College London but previously um, uh, Dame uh, and Anne-Mary uh, you were the professor, sorry, you were the past president of the Royal College of Nursing. Good morning to you. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us. I mean, it's quite a confusing picture, isn't it? That, that there's this the staff council, they've voted by majority of the unions, and obviously the more members you have and more staff you represent, the more, more your votes you, vote you get on this council. They voted by majority to accept this pay deal, but we've still got some strikes to come on the cards. We're going to have some more strike ballots, and not everyone, i.e. the BMI and junior doctors, is covered by this. But... Are you hopeful or not hopeful that we may be coming to the end of this round of strikes? Well, it's, it's really what the members want, and that's what's been represented in this vote to reject this pay deal. And, uh, I mean, going out to ballot again later this month, and those results will probably be known by the end of June. So it's really a reflection of a vote that was taken in response to the consultation in April and April the 16th. So that's carrying and translating that vote through to the, to the staff council. And yes, you know, a majority of nurses have actually voted to reject it. So there's, there's clearly a departure there along with Unite at this point in time, as there are a few other ballots still, I think, to, 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 to come in. Um, and we'll have to see how this plays out in the longer term. And why are different unions taking a different view? We did have the interesting thing earlier where uh, the Royal College of Nurses leadership recommended that nurses accept this 5% uh, uh, offer plus these lump sums for last year. And that was rejected. Again, a lot of it depends on you know the turnout. It was a low turnout. They just got over the threshold. We know that their next ballot is going to be nationwide instead of in local areas. So that's going to lead to a different result, possibly more likely to be pro. But there are an awful lot of people who are members of these unions who are choosing not to take part in these strike ballots. What, what, what does that tell us? Well, I'm not sure there is an awful lot. There's actually, you've got to meet these thresholds and those thresholds are actually being met. So they're all legitimate. Oh, I'm not saying they're not legitimate, but nevertheless, it's a big issue. And walking out and, you know, not staffing council wards in A&E is a very big issue. You'd think that every nurse would want to have their say, but they're clearly not. Well, I think strike action for nurses is, is especially divisive. But actually, we saw an overwhelming support for the strike from the front line of nurses. And we've also seen patients on the picket lines as well and the public support has been really strong and is still holding up so i think that's something that also buoys up the morale of nurses themselves yeah indeed and in terms of uh, you know of, of where this goes i mean an awful lot of people are sort of weary, particularly the patients. We understand, you know, half a million patients being affected by strikes, whether it's junior doctors, uh, uh, um, uh, you know, nurses, other uh, other staff as well going on strike. I, mean, have, I know you obviously you're, you're now working, um, you know, nursing policy at King's College London as opposed to you know, working on the front line with nurses every day. But is there now a sort of a weariness that you're detecting? People saying they just want to move on, and although the pay deal is far less than they would have originally wanted. The, that they just want to get back to work? Is is that the feeling? I think there's fire in the belly still, actually, because this is not a dispute that's solely about pay. It's about staffing, safe staffing of our wards, and actually trying to remove that sense of dread that some nurses have definitely got, and the feeling of burnout post-pandemic, and mental health issues. There's a long tail of that and long COVID what nurses have been through sacrificing their time, in some cases, the ultimate sacrifice, nurses had the highest mortality rates of all groups during the pandemic, putting themselves in harm's way. 
And I think they just feel that this deal is not enough. But there's three things on the table. There's pay, there's safe staffing legislation, and there's also a new pay spine that will help people to progress more rapidly, mm. we hope. So indirectly, that will also help to boost pay. So these are things that are worth fighting for and dealing with the chronic understaffing and underinvestment mm in the infrastructure of the NHS. It's about the future of the NHS and its sustainability. Well, there there is no doubt at all that under the austerity years, under Cameron and uh, and Osborne, and for, you know, after, after in fact, although they were following, they were following Alistair Darling, the then Labour Chancellor's, uh, back in just before 2010, uh, his, his spending plans, that there was an increase in spending uh, in real terms on the NHS. However, it was much smaller, that increase, than it had previously been. It was historically very low since the uh, launch of the NHS. Um, the amount of money going in to the NHS now, I mean, these sums are eye-watering. It's like more than 45% of government spending is going on the NHS. Um, can you help us? Because this is the thing a lot of us don't get. We know that they, there's, you know, there's not big pay rises, an awful lot of staff. I'm not saying people are on a, a pittance, but they're also not on huge sums of money. The vast majority of people who work in the NHS are not. Um, we, we're told it's not going on the infrastructure. Um, we're seeing this massive backlog, more than, more than 7 million patients. Where is that money going? And, and is it being misspent? Well, I mean, just one little factoid you might be interested in, Julia, is that 61% of staff on the lowest banding and agenda for change, which is the main pay system mm. for NHS staff, although doctors and dentists are exempt, that's a historical uh, feature. But 61% of those people are nurses. The big problem is that many nurses, when we look at the pay spine, it doesn't look too bad in, in you know, if you like, comparative terms. Yeah. But actually, the majority of nurses are stuck at the bottom on this sticky floor and unable Why? to progress. And well, one of the reasons is that actually part of the cuts that have been made is in continuing professional development budgets have been absolutely hammered. And you really need to demonstrate that you've been trying to advance your qualifications, your skills and expertise in order to progress in your career. So these two things actually feed into each other. But I mean, even although there is more money and there's more staff in the NHS itself, it's simply not enough to keep up with the growing demand. Well, you and say that, but we're, we're, we're spending a similar proportion of our national income on on the NHS as other countries are who don't have seven and a half million people on the waiting list. But we, we, we are the slowest country to recover from COVID, we've got the slowest economic growth. If we don't get people back into productive work, one of the mechanisms for doing that is through health care, then we are going to be looking at a very gloomy future. But this has actually been ongoing for since certainly, I mean, it all was accentuated during uh, the austerity period. And, you know, some people would argue that that's not how you get yourself out of an austerity period that you have to actually invest. Yeah. I mean, those, yeah, those, are, those aren't those arguments, but nevertheless, I mean, there's huge sums of money and we're not getting the health outcomes that we that people would expect. People are paying a lot of tax, lots of money's going to the NHS, and people are just frankly just wondering where that money is going. Um, uh, Professor Dame Anne-Marie Rafferty, so appreciate you joining us. Thank you very much indeed. She's a professor of nursing policy now, but she's a former president of the Royal College of Nursing.